Hello everyone and welcome to a new oil painting time lapse and studio sessions episode 17. Before I begin, I wanted to let you guys know that I'm bringing back my 20% off sale. So many of you have messaged me saying that you're really bummed you missed the last sale and you wish there was another chance to get a discount. So I'm bringing it back. Thank you all so much for your support. So for a limited time, you can use the code back to school at happyd-artist.com to get 20% off of your order of prints and stickers. And the sale ends September 31st. And I hope you guys all have a great time going back to school. Okay, on to the time lapse today. Um, this piece is quite different for me. It is one of the few pieces I'm doing that have a very cool and almost alien-esque skin tone. I was aiming for something a little bit eerie, a little bit dark and unnatural, and I'm pretty excited to explore this concept more. Okay, enough about the piece. Let's start talking about today's topic of discussion, which is five reasons why you hate your art. And um, I guess this is phrased in a very simplistic way. I guess what I really wanted to accomplish with this video is to point out some of the common reasons or common sources of people looking at their artwork and feeling disappointed and feeling demotivated and just overall not having the confidence or the self-esteem in their artwork and how to also combat those sources of agony. So let's start with number one, uh, which is I think is the biggest source um, of why you might hate your own art is you're probably comparing yourself to others instead of focusing on your own progress. And I think this is probably the most toxic mental constraint that you can put on yourself, especially as a new young artist. If you compare yourself to someone else who's had way more time to practice and way more experience, of course, you, you'll you never feel like you measure up. And I know I sound like a broken record because I say this in so many videos, and I'm sorry for being redundant, but we have all just got to stop mentally competing with other artists. It's one thing to look up to someone and be inspired by them, but it's another thing to let that be a source of negativity. I think it's definitely healthy to learn from the masters and let someone else's talent inspire you and encourage you and motivate you. But I think it's super unhealthy to let someone else's talent or success be a factor of self-doubt or discouragement. So just keep in mind that we all have our own unique timelines, our own paces. A lot of times what you see on social media or even at a gallery is someone else who has basically had their kind of final cut, like their final draft, and it's polished and perfect, and they present, you know, the highest epitome of themselves. And, you know, a lot of times all we see with our own lives is kind of the behind the scenes, the rough cuts, the, the rough drafts. So don't compare your own rough draft to someone else's final draft. I think if you keep that in mind and also know that whoever is looking like they have got it or have won or have some sort of insane magical talent, they also worked hard to get there. They were also an amateur and a beginner at some point, and they went through a lot of trials and failures to get to where they are. And so don't hold yourself to some insane standard that no one else could even achieve. Um, just kind of stay focused on your own progress and allow yourself to have the freedom to flourish in your own way. The second reason is you might have unrealistic expectations of your progress. So I don't think a lot of people who just start doing art realize how long it takes to get good at art or to get good at anything, to be honest. Getting better and becoming a master at something takes so much time. And, you know, it's crazy how much time it takes. I don't know if everyone knows how much time it takes. Um, but there's a really common theory by Malcolm Gladwell, and it's the 10,000 hour rule, where he states that it takes 10,000 hours of deliberate practice um, to become world class in any field. So let's say that if you slave away for eight hours a day, like a full-time job, 
eight hours a day every single day it would still take you three and a half years to hit that 10,000 hour quota. It'll take you three and a half years with a, of working every single day with zero breaks to become an expert at something, which is a crazy long amount of time. And most of us don't even have that much time. We only have a few hours a day to do what we want outside of school on our daily errands and responsibilities. And a lot of us only have a few days a week tops. Some of us only have the weekends to focus on our hobbies and our craft to really, you know, devote our time to practicing. So you got to be patient and your improvements won't be immediately noticeable. If you're looking for an instant type of result, you'll, you know, you'll definitely be disappointed. You should definitely cut yourself some slack and realize that any minuscule improvement or any small win should be celebrated. And, you know, instead of always beating yourself up over not improving at impossible superhuman levels. A third reason why you might hate your art currently is you probably have painted something you were really proud of recently and you feel the need to constantly one-up yourself. So when you compare your current piece to a piece that you worked on in the past that, you know, did really well, you feel underwhelmed or feel like it doesn't compare. And um, I just want to say that fluctuations in your piece, uh, piece by piece, is very normal. And we can't constantly level up with every single piece of art we create. You know, sometimes we get lucky with a piece and it comes out really, really well. And then sometimes we have bad art days and our pieces just don't turn out the way we want them to, even if we have put in the work and the practice. So I like to think of progress in my artistic abilities in the same vein as progress in my physical fitness. So let's say you're aiming to lose weight or to build muscle and get stronger. Um, you're not going to see improvements every single time you go to the gym or every single time you step on the scale. Um, I think the overall trajectory of your growth should definitely be upwards and, you know, be positive. But I think daily fluctuations are normal. You'll have good days and you'll have bad days. A fourth reason that you might hate your art is currently you're going through artist block and just feel fed up and frustrated with your current piece. And the solution to this is simply, at least in my experience, to step away from the piece and reset your mind. So you can go for a walk to, get, to clear your head or just do some random doodles with no pressure, just you know for fun to loosen up your fingers or perhaps visit a local art museum or gallery or social media to take in some new inspiration. But don't let your frustration with one piece of artwork for one day define your entire world as an artist. It's normal to have bad art days and to need time to get away from certain pieces, but it doesn't mean you should be discouraged from creating altogether. And a fifth and final reason that you might be hating your art right now is you stepped out of your comfort zone too much. And basically, if you're a beginner and haven't even figured out how to properly draw and shade with pencils yet, and then you dive straight into oil paintings with super high expectations that it'll go well, you might be a little surprised or disappointed. And I think that while it is good to occasionally push the envelope and get out of your comfort zone and try new things, you also have to be realistic about your own abilities. Um, I remember the first time I tried oils, I actually gave up for a few years after that because it was so difficult and I was constantly making mistakes and I was just fed up with it. Um, at the time, I was still in middle school and I had just started becoming comfortable with monochromatic pencil drawings. I had never used color. I had never dabbled in any colorful mediums. Um, I was super bad with even colored pencils and never even touched watercolors or acrylic. And I went straight from black and white pencil drawings to colorful oil paintings. And it was an absolute nightmare. I was constantly kicking myself for mixing the wrong colors, for not getting the oil paint to be the right consistency, for not knowing how to work with a brush. And then um, later in life, when I picked up oils again, I had many years of experience working with color and with brush mediums. Um, I had practiced with watercolor and acrylics. 
And so transitioning into oils the second time was way easier and I made way fewer mistakes. And um, even then I was careful not to paint something too complicated. So I started out with simple landscapes to get the hang of it before I started tackling portraits. So these are my five tips. I hope you guys found them useful and hopefully it'll help you combat your kind of bad art days and feelings of negativity and discouragement. Um, I wish you all the best of luck in creating. Once again, I have the 20% off sale at my store at happyd-artist.com, which ends September 31st and the code is back to school. So thank you all so much for subscribing and for watching. You guys are awesome and I, I'll catch you in the next video and I hope you have a lovely day. Bye!